Yo people, it's happy Valentine's Day. This is Arsenal against Van City. This is gonna be the preview. I'm basically gonna tell um what I think is gonna happen into the game. Now, come last month, I was feeling confident telling myself, oh when Man City come here, we're gonna batter them off the park. It's gonna be an easy win and we're all gonna be sharing a little flowers seeing come by our. Now after the last two games. We've just lost to Everton and we've just drawn to Brentford. All be that Brentford game, whether we decided we deserve to win or not, it's a different discussion. I'm not so sure. Now, albeit the difference between Man City, Brentford and Everton is that Man City don't park the bus. Now, for players like Xhaka or Martinelli, that would be much better. But based on Martinelli's form, it's like... Should we start him against Man City or should we start with Trossard? The only problem that I have with that is that Martinelli's just got his new contract and like after his first few games, we've Armatetis decided to drop him. Now, we're a team that's like very young and dropping someone that's like Martinelli after he's just gotten a new contract as well may seem like it will seem like a it could be like a big like confidence drop. And the last thing we want is an Aubameyang happening where the player's got a new big contract and they just fall off a cliff. And just like that, we've now got squad fodder. Just when we have just gotten rid of all of it. Now, although um, I'd still consider, I would still um, play Ben White at right back. He played much better against Brentford. Um, although, if... Um, I would say what Arteta kind of needs to start doing is um, against low blocks. I don't think he should be using Zinchenko as much because albeit, although he does bring so much more to like the midfield, it's almost like we're becoming too one dimensional and too predictable. It's like, I don't think we've changed our starting 11 in ever since Zinchenko's come back, like our full score starting 11 and like what Tierney bring like, with the way we're playing, it's almost like we're isolating Martinelli. And I would say this happened with Saka at the start of the season when Jesus was playing. Like, what he would do is that he would normally link up with Martinelli, which is why he had a much better start to the season than Saka, even though Saka was bringing in the goals and assists. But we can see that there's been a big drop-off ever since the World Cup with Martinelli. So I was thinking that instead, it would, like... Against Man City, we can still play with Zinchenko, but if, like, into that, the latter stages, it could be, like, we um, bring Zinchenko permanently into the midfield, take off Xhaka, and then um, swap... And then, and then swap him with Tierney. Because in that case, Tierney, he normally does... He plays as, like, a normal right-back, as, like, someone who overlaps. He gives Martinelli that option, and he has much more options to play with he's no longer as isolated as he normally is and Tierney can put in great balls into the box that's one thing that we can we can say like he he is he is perfect like i zinchenko is great like he's been great for us but we mustn't forget what Tierney. Tierney was one of our best players like throughout our banter era like i won't say throughout our banter era but like through like the 2020 season, 2021, he was one of those players where it was like, oh no, he's injured, what are we going to do? It was, he was one of those players. So to see him not get like any game time at all, it's seriously like questioning because like at least he should have, Arteta should have at least rotated against Brentford because at least then it would have brought like a different idea to how we're going to break down this like low block teams because Albeit, I will say we also miss Jesus definitely with his injury because he also brought that unpredictability with, with the way he dribbles as he collects the ball from deep and goes past a few players to get rid of the symmetry in the team. And that was how we were able to break down um, low blocks that easily. Now, albeit, Eddie, his dribbling skills, I wouldn't say they're as good as um, Jesus's. We all know that. which But his goal scoring ability is to be reckoned with like it that that's 
like he I would say other than Smith Rowe he's probably one of our most dangerous people up front like although he hasn't scored in like the last few games we can see that when he's put when he's given the opportunity he will strike albeit he didn't score at um, Brentford but all in all um with me I'm kind of like 50 50 with how will the game's gonna go against Man City if like I know we're gonna perform better like I can't ba base this game off of the FA Cup game because that meant nothing most of our first team players didn't play and the tempo just wasn't there so I f I'm confident I'm confident we can get the win it's just I know like if the knock-on effects that could take if we lose this game could literally mean that oh we're just gonna um back off this title race and all that stuff because it's going to be the first time since like august that we haven't been top of the table bearing in mind that city have been behind us by like nearly for like eight points for like a long time and all of a sudden they're three points behind us and then they're level on points but goal difference they have the advantage so it's it's like I really want to see the knock how um we move on. It's really important how we move on after this game because it says a lot about the mentality of this team. And yeah, I'm really just I'm just hoping that we kick into gear for this game. We have the top we have the twelfth man be in the home crowd and I'm confident that we can get this win. And I I hope we need to get back into gears. On to tomorrow, I hope we win.